Jason, your team to go first. Ooh. Jamelia, Charlie, what have the nation been talking about? It's got to be snow, hasn't it? It's wind. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely got to be. And what's funny is it's become a national story now. It's hit London, but we've had it for ages in the northwest. We've had it since um, about 1984. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, you don't go on about it. <laughs> you're enjoying it right now. You're, you're at a stage where you're like, oh, look at it, it's all white, so we can build snowmen, and don't our gardens look like everyone else? Hell is coming, London. Hell is coming. <laughs> In, Ma in Manchester, there's people like looting B and Q for <laughs> sleighs and wellies. Like, rock salt has, has got a, a bigger street value than crack cocaine. It's not. <laughs> Charlie, how are things in the square? How's Doc coping? Uh, yeah, I think she's all right. I don't know. Because it's icy outside the Vic, isn't it? Yeah. No, they're getting on all right, I think. Um, of course they are. They recorded it months ago. Oh, so yeah. It's not snowing there. It's yeah. fine. But no, they're doing stuff at the moment, which will come out in about eight weeks. So that look a bit. Weird. That's a shame, because anything else in these centres is so realistic. Yeah. <laughs> I've still yet to see snow. I've got no heating in my house, though. No heating in your no house? No heating in my house. You can't work the <laughs> buttons, can you? Uh, basically. You just press everything. <laughs> you know, you know, there's... lights coming on. <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> Shutters in the garage go... <laughs> <laughs> And so I've got no heating in my house. So my wow. kids are sleeping. We're all sleeping in the same bed. And I put the kids in tights. And they wear tights right out. And one of them is only little. <laughs> OK, good. Yeah. <laughs> this is Victoria. That is as irrelevant as most of the news coverage. <laughs> if you watch the news, the coverage of the news is just ridiculous. People go, and we're going live to a gritting depot in Cheshire. <laughs> and there's a woman standing there going, yes, I'm outside the uh, Cheshire gritting depot. And uh, there's a lot of grit moving out. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing it all night, getting the grit on the road. So, <laughs> well, we're back over to you in the studio. <laughs> you see, it's some snow. That's it. it. You do watch it and think travel chaos. Yeah. How, why do you bother going there then? Yeah. If there's such travel chaos, how have you got the film crews everywhere in the country? <laughs> this is the worst affected area. We've just arrived with a camera. <laughs> have you been out and done a snowman? Have you done a snowman, Sean? I haven't done a snowman, no. <laughs> What are you suggesting? You won't touch a snowman. I want to do a snowman for. What sort of dirty bastard? <laughs> if, even if I wanted to, I don't think I could. <laughs> right, you've, got, you've got kids, Jamelia. Were they off I, school? Um, my kids don't go to school. Your I, kids don't go to school? No, I, it's I for I the best. I homeschool them. <laughs> Sorry. Good. Do you hate Just what? Sorry, not really. I homeschooled them. Well, good luck, Jamelia's kids. <laughs> so all the best with that. What do you mean? You homeschool them. What do you I wear? Know no, I know. <laughs> what do you wear? Yeah, that was my first thought. <laughs> what do you wear, Jamelia? <laughs> the saucy school teacher's yeah. outfit. Across on these panel shows, right? But I am actually intelligent. I wouldn't. I would not. <laughs> no. You know, I wouldn't do something like that. You oh, know. Feel... Are they not sick of you though? Like after spending all day with you, and then they get home. No, well, they're think... at home. <laughs> <laughs> We don't spend all day okay. doing schooling because, like, children don't need the whole time. And we don't stay in the house either. Like, you know, sometimes we go to Tesco's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where are we going tomorrow on our field trip? Mom, Mummy's getting a bikini wax. Good luck, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we have a look and see whether yeah. the weather is one of the most talked about things this week? I have a feeling it might be. <laughs> of course. Our next round is called Pick of the Poles. Sean, Claudia and Shappy, your turn first. Oh, yeah. What do you like the look of? Oh, the magician's hat. You've chosen the magician. Here's a clip to illustrate the question. As a professional magician for the past 16 years, I've seen firsthand the powerful effect that magic can have on the opposite sex. On this video, you'll see as we took a group of non-magicians, taught them the tricks and let them loose. So let's watch now and see as they flirt with magic. Excuse me, I was wondering if you uh, happen to have lost this pen. No, it's not mine. Are you sure? The thing. This pen right here? No. You have about meeting me back here at 11 o'clock for a drink or so? No, no. Uh, how do I know you're not some sort of a weirdo? Well, I'm not a weirdo. <laughs> That's the cigarette. Because all I need you to do is blow on the cigarette when I count to three. Watch. One. Two, three, blow. Look, gone. Oh my god. 
So what else can you make disappear? <laughs> Flirting with magic there. <laughs> okay, here's your related question. 67% okay. of people believe in magic. True or false? What? Like wizards, like Harry Potter wizards. Like wizards, Harry Potter, that sort of thing, Jesus, that sort of caper. There's no this. <laughs> I think that there is magical things going on. What sort of magical things? Not telling you. <laughs> oh, come on. Well, I believe that the sky isn't the sky. What do you think it is? It's something else. <laughs> really? <laughs> 67% of the people were children. That's impossible. Like, no, everybody oh, knows. Impossible. Disappearing is like an illusion. Card tricks is, yeah, card tricks. But trick. some people Every... do genuinely believe no, that they David Bale... No, they don't. Bale Find me rubbish. one person over the age of five and a half well, who believes <laughs> what, in that. What about Darren Brown? Because he, he always says at the beginning, this isn't magic, and then he does loads of things that you're like, that was magic? <laughs> I think it was magic. He, 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 you know the lottery numbers? Yeah, he picked yeah. the lottery numbers after they'd been announced. I thought that was amazing. They convinced people that was a trick. <laughs> Darren Brown is, is that he, it's not just that he can do these things, it's that everybody in here, if you met Darren Brown and he started talking to you, you'd be thinking, what's he doing yeah, to yeah. me mind? Like, that's, <laughs> it's almost more important sometimes. I, I, if I was Darren Brown and everyone thought I could do anything, I, if I saw someone asleep on the train, say, I'd have a little wander over, right, I'd pull my pants down, right, <laughs> I'd give him a little nudge, I'd go, thanks for that, mate, and then walk off and he'd be... <laughs> OK, 67% of people believe in magic. True or false? What are you going to go with? It's true. True, yes. OK, it you're going to go true. Count. You're going to go... I reckon it's true. Are 67% of people asked mental? Yes. 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 <laughs> I think we should go against them, at least. Do you think? Let's go false. Sorry, Bradley. I mean, just... <laughs> I've been saying, don't call him Bradley, don't call him Bradley, the whole time. I'm so sorry. It's fine, it's I'm... fine. OK, we'll go with false then. Okay. I don't okay. know what's happening. Well, I can there. tell you that the answer is false. Ooh, well oh. played. Okay. I'm on the internet all the time. I tell you what I do, I shop on the internet. I buy absolutely everything on the internet. Okay, you're not worried about fraud and all that sort of stuff? No. You're not worried about people nicking no. your identity and that? No. I bet your password is proper confusing, though, isn't it? <laughs> You've got an amazing password that you've actually got to solve three sums to get the password. <laughs> I, buy, I buy a ton of books from Amazon, but I actually go to the, to, to the factory and, and uh, I never, ever use their website. You just go to the depot in Leicester? Yeah, and there's one in Germany. Um, I just like to be able to browse and see them in the boxes and, you know... It would be amazing if Amazon opened up a shop where you could browse. <laughs> yeah. I find it weird when they do that thing where they, um where they sort of suggest other things that you might like to buy yeah. because yeah. of what you've bought previously. Yeah. Like, I bought your DVD at Christmas, right, and then it Thanks said, so much. you like Jimmy Carr's DVD, you might also like uh, a Police Academy 5 assignment Miami Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas, actually, you'd, you'd be more likely to like Mission to Moscow, which is the sixth <laughs> film the but, but you were great in both of those films, so... <laughs> I tell you, I bought your DVD Christmas as well, and you, quite rightly, you know, they offer you things that yeah. you think would be associated, and there's an inflatable bondage chair that came up online. <laughs> but it, well, sadly... there, there must have been some other things that you bought no. as well. <laughs> I'll tell you what you would love. They were also offering mine camp. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you might like Mein Kampf. It's a book by a young writer called Adolf Hitler. Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> It is, the recommendations is an odd thing, because it's sort of... I don't mind buying stuff on uh, Amazon, but when, it, when it, the recommendations come up, I do sometimes think, is that me? I've got to change. <laughs> it would freak you out if it happened in Tesco, wouldn't it? You know what I mean? If you were, like, what? buying some tuna and someone went, do you like tuna? <laughs> you tried it with pasta? It's well nice. <laughs> <laughs> or if somebody came and bought your shopping last minute. Like, you've, you've done all the work, bought it, and you put your bid in for your shopping, you're lining up in Tesco and someone's gone, I think you'll find that's my shopping now. <laughs> <laughs> David, do you buy anything on... You buy eBay stuff, don't you? I recently bought on uh, eBay a five-foot actual-size inflatable giant penguin. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. it's the first time ever in my life I have thought, wow, when my parents were my age, they had two kids in a house. And I have an actual size five foot. <laughs> 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 right, 
Right, let's have a look and see whether shopping is one of the top five uses of the internet. Yay! Yes! Yay! Shopping is, of course, one of the top five uses of the internet. The thing I love about internet shopping is when it gets delivered and you're not in, and you get to go and pick it up from an industrial estate seven miles from your house. <laughs> and on the way back, you have to drive past the shop you could have bought it from in the first fucking place. <laughs> The worst thing about internet grocery shopping is the substitution. So if they've run out of butter, let's say, they bring you margarine. I've got a list of... Uh, these are all genuine substitutions that have happened to shoppers, OK? This is from the Guardian website, OK? Genuine substitutions. Someone bought some lychees and they replaced them, because they didn't have any lychees, they replaced them with Dairy Lee. <laughs> Near enough, fine, OK. Headache tablets. They, they wanted headache tablets. They got dishwasher tablets. <laughs> See, that lychees... Dairy Lee isn't a real cheese, so it is technically a lying cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're defending them. Okay, this is, this is I think, my favourite. There's two more. Twelve toilet rolls replaced with a pack of nappies. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine when the grocery shop arrives, oh, thank God you're here. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> okay, this, uh, this is the best thing ever, okay? They didn't have any tampax, so they replaced them with. A Twix bar. <laughs> it's a genuine thing. Clearly someone in a stock room has gone, well, that's about the... Yeah. <laughs> Do, you like love? Do you know what? When you eat them, they do feel like they expand oh. inside you. Don't they? <laughs> He's talking about tampons. Yes! <laughs> Not Twix bars. Ugh. <laughs> I think uh, social networking, although I'm, I feel like a granddad just saying that phrase, social networking. Yeah, yeah my like... granddad always used to say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've been down that pit all day. <laughs> social, social networking. networking. <laughs> That's where I met your gran, you know, Bebo. Yes. <laughs> I feel like an old man when I talk about MySpace. I feel like I remember when this was all MySpace and uh, all we had was friends reunited for a fiver and we were happy. You know, it's like, uh, have you been to MySpace lately? It's like a waste ground. Yeah. It's just Tom by himself crying. <laughs> you, you're obsessed by Twitter. You weren't you voted the, the best Twitterer? Uh, um, yes. I think, I think you were. No, you were because you Twitter all the time. Well, I don't Twitter all the time, but just occasionally I'll think of an off colour, weird. Um, remark about robots or sperm and then I'll just Twitter it and see how many people react to it, you know, and... Um... But being the world's, you know, best Twitter is like being the world's strongest dwarf, isn't it, really? <laughs> <laughs> so are you a big Twitter fan then, Sean? Just, I just say, I don't mind people doing it, I just wish they wouldn't mention it. <laughs> I say we just do it and keep quiet about it. So what are you doing? Twittering. Shut up, don't want to know. <laughs> I think what it is, it's basically it's digital shouting. That's what it is. Cos if you were walking down the street, you'd be going, you wouldn't be walking down the street going, I'm going to the cinema! <laughs> yes, I'm going to the cinema, I'm going to see Avatar again. 3D rocks! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> you think you're an idiot. <laughs> My issue with that, Sean, is the fact that you would clearly be brilliant on Twitter. Because yeah. that is exactly the kind well, of thing... someone people... pretending to be me on Twitter. There is, yeah. Someone pretending a... to be you on Twitter? Yeah. How grumpy are they? <laughs> Someone sent me something and they said, hey, do you want them to stop it? I went, no, if they want to pretend <laughs> they're me. I just think what a sad state their life's got into. Yeah. I mean, really, if you could pretend to be anyone, why would you pretend to be a grumpy <laughs> middle-aged man with a hangover? <laughs> <laughs> What's weird about Twitter is the way people... Like, before, people would spot you in, you know, doing a bit of shopping or whatever, and then you would not know that person had spotted you doing shopping, and then you'd... you'd be like, now, someone's... I got a message over there. I took my wife, we went to, see, we went to Nando's and then went to see Avatar, right? Now, oh, that's... you've lived... The show oh, yeah. business has changed you. <laughs> Nando's and then the movies. Yeah, and, it's hey. one or t'other in the old days. <laughs> and then the next day, someone met, said, uh, did you enjoy your chicken then? Right? That was weird, right, for one, that someone uh... knew I'd had chicken. And then somebody went, you could have had a shave before taking your wife to the cinema. They were actually following me. Yeah. Not on Twitter, in real life! <laughs> I don't get that. They were following you in real life, and then they twitted, tweeted... What, well, just come over and go? You could have... <laughs> they twatted me! That's right, they twatted me. <laughs> all of you, that's going to happen to all of you who Twitter, one day your head's going to end up in a jar <laughs> on someone's <laughs> shelf. <laughs> And I'm going to go, serves them wrong. <laughs> you watch on, it's going to be your shelf. <laughs> David, are you on, what are you on? Facebook yeah, or...? I, mean, I don't use... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, the main function of, of Facebook is to um, 
look at uh, pictures of your ex-girlfriend on holiday with her current boyfriend and look through 200 photographs till you find one where she's just got a slight look of regret in her eyes. <laughs> See if uh, Twitter, Facebook, and social networking is one of the top uses of the internet. Of course it is. Of course. So the question is: twenty-three percent of parents think their child has an extraordinary talent. An extraordinary talent. I don't know what is an extraordinary talent. Well, I like, I, you know, they think they're a fabulous singer, fabulous dancer, just an, a talented. Two of my kids can fly. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one can't. The other one, it turns out. Yeah. That so went I badly. don't let the other two fly. So you're, you're just upset the other one. <laughs> whatever, whatever its name is. <laughs> <laughs> when he's out there, I go, go, fly. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming back in. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, if you call that extraordinary, then, yeah. Guilty as charged. <laughs> Jodie, what, what do you think? I, don't, I think so. I think, you know, all parents love and adore their children. My, mine are only five months old, so they don't really... One time I went to change a nappy and she sneezed and shit everywhere. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and he went... <laughs> it was amazing. I went, oh, that was extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember what my other kid can do. The other one, the one who can't fly, though, can do something quite extraordinary. <laughs> what can he do, he Sean? Can, you know, he can walk on one hand, like that, on his fingers, like in cartoons. <laughs> And I tell him, don't do that when the other two are in. <laughs> but that's it. Can't read or write, either of them. 23% <laughs> of parents think their child has an extraordinary talent, so you're going to go for true or false? Sean? True, yeah, let's go true. true. Yeah, yeah. true. Okay, you're going true. What are you going to go for? What do you I think false. 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 Yeah, we'll go false. Then. False. You'll go false. Why I not? can tell you the answer is false. Oh. In fact, 42% of parents think their child has an extraordinary talent. I'll tell you who I think was a talented child. Do you remember little Michael Jackson from the Jackson 5? He was incredible, wasn't he? What have happened to him? <laughs> oh, right, OK. <laughs> Did he? And then... 40 million albums. And then...? He, he did what? <laughs> yeah, everyone likes children. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> But I could go and see him live? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I better just kick on, then. <laughs> Over to Jason's team. What do you like the look of? Theatre. Let's go with the theatre. Of course. Our first love. OK. 51% of theatre-goers say what has ruined their theatre experience? Other uh, oh. the people. Other people, the, other, the rest of the audience. Yeah, I was doing a show once, and I'd, I'd literally just started, and I was doing, doing my bit, and this woman came down the aisle and go, Michael! I can't find my seat. <laughs> my son's in it, and I can't find him anywhere. And I'm trying to carry on. Excuse me, I can't. I don't know where I'm sitting. It's too dark. And I had to stop. <laughs> and up goes the light. And the bloke, who's obviously with his mum, is going, <laughs> "Dear oh, God!" Oh. <laughs> and it's off he goes. Put her in the seat, and then we had to carry on. I went to see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and um, we took like, took the whole family. We all went along. And my little brother's ten, and he's just at that age where. He thinks it's, like, sort of real. And there's the point where Snow White gets given that poison apple and she goes, should I eat the apple? And everyone's going, no, don't do it. And he's... My brother's on his feet, he's going, no, don't do it! Don't do it, it's poison! Don't do it! Don't do it! <laughs> and she eats it and collapses and he went... I bloody told her! <laughs> <laughs> mobile phones? So, ah, yeah. mobile, mobile phones. phones. Yeah. That is the right answer. Oh, we're not right, yeah. <laughs> Yes, 51% of theatre-goers say that a mobile phone has ruined their theatre experience. The worst thing about phones going off in the theatre is you end up with the actors breaking out of character, pointing and shouting, and everyone in the audience hissing and muttering. In the end, I could hardly hear what my mate was trying to say, even on loudspeaker. <laughs> Best way to discourage burglars. What I do, I put a nude picture of me in the window. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, from behind, so I'm looking over my shoulder like that, going... <laughs> He just says, come in. <laughs> Palmer ham. I just put Palmer ham out, cos people are easily distracted. You come in thinking, right, I want a DVD. Hey, up, there's some ham there. <laughs> <laughs> you could lace the Palmer ham or something. <laughs> Bit of mozzarella. <laughs> 
A lot of burglars are junkies, aren't they? <clears throat> so what I think would be a good thing to do is, is fill your, your front garden full of gnomes dressed as policemen. <laughs> <laughs> they go, whoa, what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a bit freaky. I'm not going <laughs> OK, best way to discourage burglars? <laughs> a dog. That's dog. a crazy answer. Yeah. <laughs> dog? That's mental. Uh, uh, beware of the dog sign is number nine on our list. That only works for cat burglars, though. <laughs> oh, no, we've had a call in from the two Ronnies, they want it back. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, the best way to do it? Is burglar alarm? No, that's, that's number four. Alan Cochran? Is it a moat? <laughs> <laughs> Is number one a moat? The best way to discourage burglars is a moat. I don't know if you can say moat properly. <laughs> I, I'm guessing that you're trying to say moat. But you're saying moat. <laughs> like, like a goldfish that's got learning difficulties. <laughs> Shall I say it like you say it? Yeah. All right. Moat. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's it's meant to fool the burglars. Lights on. It's yeah, lights on. I was about to say. Lights, lights on, on, of course. Lights on the, house. Yeah. <laughs> the best way to discourage burglars is leaving the lights on. If you've broken into a house and you're watching this because they've left the telly on, why don't you do a poo in the living room? <laughs> okay. Scariest fairy tale character. The scariest something that I remember as a kid is a child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Mm. Yeah. That is in yeah. there, I think. Played by Madonna, it? wasn't it? Madonna, that. Lots yeah. of people say it. One of the most first roles. Is it Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> <laughs> I remember my dad used to read that to me every night. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, and he ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, I tell you what, the other one I ate, Jill from Jack and Jill. She was a f clumsy, <laughs> wasn't she? <laughs> He's fallen down the hill, right? And then she's made the exact same mistake, falling down, landing on her, and then he's broken his crown and she's gone, I know what fixed that, a bit of brown paper and vinegar. vinegar. You're like, <laughs> Germaline, you daft sod, Germaline! <laughs> okay, I'll give you a clue. I think uh, gingerbread house. The witch the from Ansel and Gretel. It's the oh, witch with the oven and all of, of that going on. It's, it's the right answer. Yeah. Yes, the scariest fairy tale character is the witch in Hansel and Gretel. In the original fairy tale, the witch who eats children represents acute postnatal depression, and the gingerbread house represents cravings during pregnancy. Hansel is the male generative force, the sperm, the son of the wood chopper or penis. Gretel is the egg. The enchanted forest is pubic hair. The warts on the witch's face are an STD. Cinderella is a the gingerbread man is gay. The beanstalk is a giant cock. Little Red Riding Hood is the clitoris, and Goldilocks animals. Any questions? <laughs> Jason, David, Fern, what have the nation been talking about? Go on, Dave. They've been talking about a footballer <laughs> called <laughs> either Terry John or John Terry. <laughs> no one is quite sure. No. And what he's done is he's <laughs> had sex with a lady. <laughs> it's like most of these sort of stories. I, I read them and I think, I've got my own problems. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I thought, I thought to myself, like, the radiator in our bathroom won't turn off, so it's dead. <laughs> it's really hot all the time. It does seem bizarre how big it... I mean, it's just been absolutely... Both, sat, both. Everywhere, yeah. Both and he tried to get a gagging order, didn't he? But she said she wasn't into the kinky stuff. <laughs> Fern, you're a married woman. What I... do you think of John Terry's antics? Well, I think that she knew that that's what he does. Do you think he's a role model? That's the thing, that's what keeps... They keep going, don't they? They keep going, he's not a role model. And I think, hold on, he's 170 grand a week and he shagged a French underwear model. He's a role model! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, he's done a terrible thing, and it was my husband, I'd kill him, and all of that stuff. But it is the World Cup year, and I think we're all hoping <laughs> so. <laughs> 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 After the World oh, Cup... Oh, hey, hang, hang, hang on. <laughs> if you listen carefully, you can hear Emmeline Pankhurst turning in her grave. <laughs> I feel sorry for that girl, although she did allegedly sleep with a number of the Chelsea... Like, how many footballers do you have to have sex with before you become an official mascot? Let's see. <laughs> I found, in my case, it was six. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're kicking off Anticut about him, like, losing the England captaincy. And, um, but you're like, well, who are you going to give it to? Who, who else is it? You're going to give it to 
Steven Gerrard. <laughs> Steven Gerrard, he punched the DJ the other week. Then you've got uh, then you've got Wayne Rooney, he likes to have a little play with grannies every so often. You know? <laughs> he didn't know they were grannies, did he? To be fair. In Liverpool, a granny's about 38. <laughs> The only reason I think we should question whether he should play for England at all is that he has had sex with so many women, and apparently, something I read, he had sex with somebody on crutches in a toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he'll have sex with anyone, and what I'm concerned about, in terms of his football career, is he'll be running down towards goal, and maybe the wind will blow, and a linesman will show a little bit too much leg, and Terry will be on him like a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> full of this evil seat. But also, if you want to have sex with someone in a toilet, it's much more room to have sex with someone in a disabled toilet. So someone Absolutely. with crutches gets the front of the queue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah think on, Terry. <laughs> They're all right, them disabled toilets. You've got all them handles and that, so you can do, you know... Then, <laughs> you know, a little CD player and some candles and that. It's quite... <laughs> quite romantic. Candles? Yeah, candles. <laughs> I've never been in one with candles. No, you've got to bring your own candles, you oh. weirdo. <laughs> Sean, you're a, you're a Chelsea fan. What, uh, yeah. Uh, does it annoy you? I can't really comment on it because, by, as they say, people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, you know? What? I mean, the reason... <laughs> the reason um, <laughs> I have... Oh. I mean, it's not quite the same as John Terry, but uh, I was round a friend of mine's house and uh, he had to go uh, to pick something up from the post office, you know, like you do with those cards, and while he was out, I had a bite of his toast. <laughs> is that four other people on this panel also had a bite of that toast, so... I had, I had my bite in a yeah. disabled toilet. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, if he comes back with, from South Africa with the World Cup, I think he can sleep with most of our missuses, you know what I mean? I don't think... <laughs> I, have any I think if he comes back from South Africa the World Cup, he'll have nicked it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether John Terry's one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> Of course he is, of course. Yes, the tabloids have reported that John Terry cheated on his wife with a teammate's girlfriend. Vanessa Peroncel fell for Terry when she first saw his tackle, and she loved it when he got it in the box. <laughs> she was amazed by his ball control, especially when she saw him dribble around the goal mouth. <laughs> and then shoot and score. She was incredibly impressed that he could shoot not once, not twice, but three times in 90 minutes, and she loved it when they changed ends at half-time. <laughs> But what really impressed her was when he'd finished playing football, he took her home and f***ed <laughs> her. <laughs> Sean, Holly, Greg, what do you like the look of? The alien thing. You want the alien? Holly, yes. Holly's chosen the alien. OK. Please. You've gone for the picture of the alien. Here is a clip of Patrick Moore talking to a man who can genuinely speak alien. Mr Bernard Barron from Essex moves in a realm of the unknown which makes it very difficult for us to disprove him. And yet he has the charm, the cheerfulness and the courage which is common to all independent thinkers. How many languages can you speak? I can speak altogether three of the space languages. <laughs> One is Venusian, the second is Kruger, the planet Kruger 60B, yes. and Pluto. How did you learn these languages? These languages have been a gift sent from me from the actual people by rays. What about Plutonian? What does that sound like? Plutonian is... <laughs> what does that mean, actually? That means, how are all you? I am very pleased to see you... this afternoon. It makes up that aliens have a concept of our um, hours, like they have before and afternoons. <laughs> I used to be able to speak alien, but I've got uh, my bottom teeth grew back. <laughs> okay, here is your related question: Do the majority of our studio audience believe in extraterrestrials? What's your definition of an extraterrestrial? Well, terrestrial is like BBC One, Two, Three, Four, Five. <laughs> Extraterrestrials like Men and Motors, UK Living. <laughs> Have I misunderstood this question? Aliens. Basically aliens. <laughs> what I don't understand about aliens is they travel millions of light years. Do they ever come and meet the president or anything, do they? It's like, oh, no, I'm going to hang out with some rednecks and have sex with them in the night. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're more like you than you think. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at this picture, why don't you get fat aliens? I mean, they can eat anything they want, can't they? They're aliens. Jabba the Hutt. He was fat. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't an alien. 
He was. He, he wasn't. What was he? He wasn't they... real. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean real aliens? Some real ones, like this oh, one here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun when people do spot aliens, though. Like, what I like about... There was some a while back in, um, in Dudley, where the, apparently Dudley is like a hotspot in this country for UFO activity, right? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> rang up to say they'd seen a UFO, and um, they went, what's it, what's it like? And they went, it looks like a Dorito. <laughs> and they went, <laughs> When, when describing shapes, who gets to Dorito before Triangle? <laughs> do the majority of our studio audience believe in extraterrestrials, yes or no, Sean? I don't think they do. I, th I think um, they're quite a rational bunch. OK, what do you think? What are you going to go with? Yes or no? Oh, oof. I think I think they do. I they think they do. Lot, there's a lot of space out well, there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go through them. OK, I can tell you the answer is yes. 54% of our audience said they believe in extraterrestrials. <laughs> Robbie Williams, Yuri Geller, Krista Berg, Gloria Honeyford, David Icke, Danny Dyer, Howard from the Halifax ads. They all believe in aliens. Can they all be wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 8 out of 10 Cat Sports Special, a show about survey statistics and this week, sport. Did you know, for example, there are 336 dimples on a regulation golf ball? Which is why they're so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest participation sport in the world is fishing. Of course, a lot of the participants are fish, and they're not happy about it. <laughs> Chinese gymnast Lu Li is the smallest person ever to compete in the Olympic Games. Lu Li was just four foot three inches tall. Wow, we was the second smallest. <laughs> And 63% of people think Serena Williams is better looking than Venus. I'm going to be diplomatic and say I think they're both lovely looking fellas. <laughs> yes, your team first. We won the World Cup. That's oh, got to yeah, be it. Yeah, that's right. The one thing that we remember was 1966 and the golden haired boy Bobby Moore lifting that cup. I like the way that it's lifted alongside two world wars. Like it's sort of of equal importance. <laughs> But it's not gooey, won't it? Could you imagine that song? Like, two world wars and a couple of semi-finals. <laughs> England, 1966. So I'm not old enough to, to remember it. Um, Gabby, what was it like? <laughs> oh. What are you messing about? <laughs> the ball was heavier then, though, wasn't it? It's light now, the ball. It moves around. Oh, you have skill to control <laughs> it. Those, the ball in 66 was like basically kicking a suitcase. <laughs> around. <laughs> It was, it's really heavy. You actually you probably need a wheelbarrow to get it over the line. <laughs> so the very fact they got it up the Germans' end was quite an achievement. <laughs> Do you rate our chances for 2010 in South Africa? Yeah, I think, th uh, you know, it's a bit of a cliche, but I think this is the best chance we've had. But, of course, that means we won't progress in the group now that I've just said that. But we've got an easy group as well, so... Wayne Rooney is our biggest hope. He's, he's the best English player and he's also the only man who can grow a beard that's red when his hair isn't. I think that, <laughs> that is just, in its own right, that should give him a medal. <laughs> he looks like he could grow it in about four minutes. Oh, de definitely. <laughs> he just goes, I fancy a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Have we been practising penalties, though? That's the big, you know what I mean? That is I hard, can't believe it? when they get to the final, because I don't know anything about football, but when get they get, out. you just watch the final and they go, oh, I don't think they spent enough time practising penalties. Surely that happens in a footballer's life when they're off the PlayStation for half an hour. They go, we should try and kick it a goal. Yeah, but you can't replicate. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's the nerves, isn't it? You know, Denise has performed in front of hundreds of thousands of people. You can people replicate it. You can't Gabby. replicate you the You can nerves. replicate. That's nonsense. And I they say that. So you can't represent that intense pressure. What you do is you say to an England player, right, you take a penalty. If you miss, we're going to shoot you. <laughs> yeah. We know the World Cup win 66 is going to be up there somewhere. Let's have a look and see where. Controversially, England winning the World Cup in 1966 only came second in our poll of the most memorable sporting moments. The Queen, of course, was in the crowd to support her countrymen. Sadly, the Germans lost. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Johnny and Gabby, your turn first. What do you like the look of? Fans. Fans, please. The fans, OK. Please. You've chosen the sports fans. Here's yeah. a clip to illustrate the question. <laughs>
I'm from Glasgow town, and when we're hitting the field, we're going to mess around. We're going to move the ball, we're going to pass and rush, and if you get in the way, you're going to feel the crush. The truth can hurt, and the truth is me. We're the baddest team that's ever been seen. We can't be stopped when we start to play. Talk about the diamonds, what do we say? The diamonds. <laughs> yeah. That's the, uh, the Glasgow Diamonds there. They're the uh, top of the Clydesdale NFL and bottom <laughs> of the Clydesdale <laughs> NFL. OK, your related question is, 11% of sports fans would allow their sporting idol to sleep with their partner, true or false? My sporting idol's a man. I don't want him to sleep with my husband. Oh, come on. Treat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your sporting idol? I, you know, a lot of couples do this. You know, you have kind of fantasy shags where if you meet them, if you both Ooh, meet them, they're yeah, like so far out there that you, you know, you go, yeah, you're allowed to. So Kenny's was Cameron Diaz, and mine was this New Zealand rugby player. You... So anyway, I check into this hotel in Melbourne. Well, you mean you went for one that's actually feasible? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a very much yeah. impossible shag. I got in there, and I Genius. rang Kenny, I said, you'll never guess who's in the lift with me. It's Dougie Howlett, the New Zealand rugby player. He put the phone down. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an agreement with my girlfriend. If I ever get to sleep with Kylie Minogue, she can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 11% of sports fans would allow their sporting idol to sleep with their partner. Who's your sporting idol? Bob Nudd. <laughs> no. Bob, Bob Nudd. Bob Nudd. Bob, Bob, Nudd. Bob Nudd. The angling. The angler. Um, <laughs> You'd let your wife I'd let him sleep it. with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he'd bother her for long. <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd go in there. <laughs> It he starts talking about different flies and, and, yeah. uh, and casting <laughs> angles and she'd fall asleep. <laughs> He'd probably have a fiddle and then go, actually, <laughs> to in. I'll get some good, uh, I'll get some roach on that estuary. I love this mime. He'd have a fiddle. <laughs> Denise, what, what do you think? Who's your sporting idol? I do like Tiger Woods, or used to. Tiger so Woods probably Tiger would. Woods. He's not fast. <laughs> has a blanket policy every hole's a goal. It, 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 <laughs> it you out. 11% of sports fans would allow their sporting idol to sleep with their partner. You're going to go... I think it's false, because I think it's going to be higher. I think it's a lie. Yeah. Lie. OK, what are you going to go for? True, then. You're going to go true? Yeah, we'll go true. OK. I can tell you it's true. 11% of sports fans would allow their sporting yeah. idol to sleep with their partner. I must say, if I had to pick a sporting idol, it would probably be Desert Orchid. My wife is in for a treat. <laughs> Jason's team, you're to choose. What do you want to go for? Well, yes. we've got to. 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 Olympics. You're going to Olympics. OK, you've gone for the Olympic rings. Here's your question. What do the nation prefer, the Olympics or the World Cup? <laughs> It's a good question, isn't it? The thing with the Olympics, like the World Cup, you go, well, I like football. <laughs> I like football. And it's, you know, if you like football, then you like the whole of the World Cup, don't you? Mm. With the Olympics, you only like certain things. Like, there's some f stuff in there. Like that, you know, rhythmic gymnastics. No offence, Gabby, <laughs> right? I know you did it for a little time, right? But that one, I'm telling you, that is just a bloke who's got a bit of toilet tissue stuck to his hands, that is. <laughs> The other thing that gets me about, about the Olympics is that they give away a bronze medal for third. Like, bro, there's gold, yeah? Valuable. Oh, yeah, gold, yeah, gold, lovely. valuable. Silver, valuable. Bronze, if you had some lying around the house, a thief wouldn't even bother nicking it. <laughs> have you got any bronze? I have. No. Someone comes to just going to go, we've got a bronze medalist medal. coming in today. No one cares. You may as well, if you're going to give them a bronze medal, you may as well let them hold a toaster. Yeah. <laughs> Olympics over in the East End, yeah? When they have the van load of medals being shipped over, believe me, they're not going to have to protect the bronze medals from the local hoodies. <laughs> Worthless. Worthless. You've obviously not seen that. any of those cash for bronze adverts on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, what are you going to go for? What do the nation prefer, the Olympics or the World Cup? Sean? World Cup, World Cup, World Cup, World Cup, World Cup. OK, you're going World Cup. What are you going to go for? No, I think we've got to go for Olympics. Let's just go for it. Cos well, even know. if it's wrong, it's right. Yeah. <laughs> but it is really... it will be wrong. <laughs> I can tell you that 57% of the nation prefer the Olympics to the World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what things they find the most irritating, annoying and offensive. It's our panellists' job to guess the top five. Jason, your team to go first. So, Jason, Lauren, David, what do people find irritating, annoying and offensive? 
Can I just say good luck, Jimmy, and have a great show, yeah? <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Have a really great show, yeah? Yeah, you too. Yeah, <laughs> that I is think... quite an offensive and irritating thing, isn't it? <laughs> is it the fact that people are so obsessed by celebrities? Yeah. It's yeah. people in the papers all the time for shagging and that. I know. I mean, like, jo like Jordan has been the big mm. one recently because she's remarried in Vegas. I mean, personally, I think it's, it's clearly a love match that's going to work out. You oh, know, yeah, she's a, a best-selling author, a writer. I wish her all the best. Yeah. Well, well but does, does she write... <laughs> you know, and she's written all these books. A lot of celebrity autobiographies are no holds barred. Hers are no holes barred. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> I've had sex with celebrities. So. You have had sex with all of them. <laughs> You've had sex with all of them. Yes. Oh. Several times. You're next. <laughs> <laughs> who, who have you had sex with? Okay, you haven't read my books. I've uh, read your books, Candice. Of course not. Oh. Okay, name names. Liam Neeson. Yes. Sly Stallone. Yes. Um, they're the two biggies in the book. That, they weren't that biggie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just forget the show. Let's just talk about this. <laughs> well, who, who else was on the list? Mick Jack Jagger? Nicholson. But I dated these Jack men... Jack Nicholson? Yes. Well done. Have you really shagged Jack Nicholson? Yes. What was he wow. like? It, the Joker was wild. Nice. Was the Joker wild. was wild. She's even got a line on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Janice just asked me, she said, do I sound like a slag? And I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> We were talking about Janice's autobiography, and to be fair, that is a different kettle of fish from, sh you know, Chantel off Big Brother's autobiography. Well, a lot of them. It, it almost reads like when you remember at school and you have to write about your weekend. You have to <laughs> they go, what did you do? The on news your, book. This is what Monday. I did on my holidays. I went out and played with friends. I did some skipping. I had some chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I, went out and, I went out again and played with friends. We went to see Grandma. <laughs> then I married Wayne Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sean, are you a fan of celebrity culture? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he loves it. Oh, yeah. no, I think I can't wait till that copy of Heat hits the doormat. <laughs> when does it come out? Every day? Tuesday. <laughs> near enough, Sean, near enough. It's weird. I do think what's weird about magazines like Heat is it's gossip. It's like it's a gossip magazine. Mm. I was brought up to believe that gossip wasn't like a good thing. It was like on a moral par with like shoplifting or smearing on toilet doors, you know. <laughs> it wasn't something you went on about. I find those magazines quite hypnotising, do you know I think? When you walk in, they're always in that order, aren't they? Like, hello, look, closer, OK, now. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the whole thing, celebrity yeah. culture, the whole heat thing. I, if I wanted racism, ignorance and people f***ing off a pig, I'd have stayed at home with my parents. <laughs> and see whether our obsession with celebrities has annoyed the public. <laughs> yes, the thing that offends us most is celebrity culture. These days, people want the rewards of being a celebrity without the long, hard slog of having to go out with David Williams. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think that, you know, the kind of people that go on reality TV wouldn't be able to survive in the real world. Here's Big Brother's Nicky Graham working as a fisherman. Nikki has no idea what jobs are about to hit her in the next 48 hours. I'd quite like to work in um, a school, fashion industry, for a skincare company, but only for an hour or two. That's the problem. <laughs> Is this actually fishing? Are we doing it now? After an hour of trawling, the nets are raised, but Nikki still hasn't lifted a finger. Of course, uh, Nicky Graham from Big Brother there being a trawlerman. <laughs> it made me enjoy fish more. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and that's the amount of pain she goes through for every fish I eat. <laughs> She'd be better as bait, wouldn't she? Pull <laughs> <laughs> her hook and chuck her overboard. Uh, right, what else do people find irritating, annoying and offensive? Sean. Is it personal hygiene, Jimmy? Do people not like smelly people? Yeah, especially in London, on the tube, bad breath, smelly armpits, all that stuff, that's going to be in there. People, yeah. Sometimes it's nice because people have a manly smell. Yeah. Funky. <laughs> funky? funky. Yeah. I don't like funky odours, but, you know, some guys, that are, you know, have funk. A lot of celebrities bring out perfumes, don't they? The only one who hasn't brought out perfume is Amy Winehouse. <laughs> <laughs> and if she did, I think it would be called something like Landfill. <laughs> I think it might be called Amy Winehouse, Pull My Finger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine the bottle, though, would be just a little glass shaped of a crack pipe. <laughs> 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 almost, that's what, this like is, this is almost like a product development meeting now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Um, Sometimes with the... Uh, like, when you go to wash your hands after you've had a wee and that, that's, that's quite a... People get very annoyed about that. And I, I, I do wash my hands. Sometimes I pretend to wash them and then come out and my wife's like, looks at me like I've washed them so I have to do a little pretend dry of my hands. <laughs> I'm drying nothing, but I like to pretend for her sake. Have you heard that thing that in a bowl of peanuts on the bar there's like 11 or 20 or 30 27. different... 27. What? 27 different types, types of, urine. of urine? You know, yeah, that's so... why they're called peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't... I didn't, even know, I didn't even know there were 27 different... I can only think of oh. Clear and Cloudy and I was stuck. Yeah. <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether personal hygiene is something that annoys you British people. <laughs> yes, 47% of us find bad personal hygiene offensive. My girlfriend's actually got a cleanliness problem downstairs. Kitchen's a f***ing state. <laughs> Sean's team first. What do you think the nation have been talking about? The people still moaning about the snow. Well, well, some people are slightly more moany than others. Brilliantly on the news, another bloke was being interviewed on the news the other day, and he was, he was saying, he said, he, said, uh, he said, my bins haven't been emptied for a month. And the way he said it was like a euphemism. <laughs> 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 Nobody's come round to empty my bins. <laughs> they haven't even given them a lick. <laughs> I don't mind if someone just came round and just jiggled my bins. <laughs> Say, have your bins been emptied recently? Uh, they were. There was a lack of bin men, and I had left out a big load of beer for them for Christmas, which was still there until uh, earlier this morning. So they have sex with you for beer? <laughs> <laughs> Why did the sex bit come into it? I was thinking of my euphemism. Yeah, I think you were still It was just in our heads. Oh. Yeah. But in our heads, it was going brilliantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I'm now cleared out. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Um, the, have you been affected by the snow, Josie? i tell you what I saw. Um, I was walking along the road just after it snowed and everyone was moaning about lack of grit. I saw someone had taken it into their own hands and what they'd done was they put um, loads of flour on the drive and then when they run out of flour, they put loads of oats and then they put loads of sugar. <laughs> and I, I was really expecting to see, just next to that, a baker frozen to death. Just... <laughs> I've got my own thought. I use these little sachets of salt. <laughs> <laughs> What I do is, I sprinkle a bit, like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> right, then I get another one out. <laughs> I get really pissed off. I get really pissed off by the whole, like, panic buying stuff that everyone talks about, like, panic buying, because there's a food shortage, people go out and they panic buy bread, eggs and milk. Like, to me, that doesn't seem like panic buying in a food shortage. That's quite intelligent buying. Panic buying would be if you went out to the shops during a food shortage and came back with, like, a copy of 40 Towers and a dildo. Panic! <laughs> <laughs> Is there a business opportunity here? Peter? I don't... What, with dildos? No. I Although... <laughs> Do you know what I see, though? I don't know whether everybody else thinks the same, but this weather, you've got some nutters on the road. I did see the two guys that drove on the canal this week. You yeah. see that? Right, wasn't it? You know, the best thing about the story, so it was guys, they got their car, whatever it was, a little tiny Citroen, they drove it along a canal and it went into the water and it reported that they both made it out alive and so did the dog. <laughs> they took a dog. <laughs> Maybe the dog was driving. <laughs> That's why they're on the canal. <laughs> you know, sometimes you go to your dog, go on, you have a go. He's <laughs> <laughs> gonna tape his paws to the wheel. <laughs> I'll do the gears. Don't worry about the pedals. <laughs> That's what happened.
let's have a look and see whether the cold weather is still one of the most talked about things. <laughs> yes, of course it is. Yes, this is the news that the UK is still in the midst of the coldest winter for 30 years. A headmaster in Hampshire claims some pupils are struggling to make it into school because of the bad weather. He said of the 320 sitting maths A-level, 280 were in the exam hall when the exam started. Another 30 turned up 20 minutes later. Four people went to the toilet, but only three returned. Then 42 left the building. How many were there at the end of the exam? <laughs> Many people in the north have been bulk buying food because they're fat, greedy bastards. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's that about? Well, just because people are buying milk and bread, we like milky bread. What's that? <laughs> milky bread, yeah, bulk yeah. buying in Greg's. Oh, we love it. Greg's <laughs> <laughs> is still open, they don't care if it's snowing. It's great, <clears throat> you can just slide straight in and put a pasty straight in your mouth. <laughs> Jason, what else have the nation been talking about this week? The election battle heats up, apparently, oh. because there's no other news. They've gone, there's an election in six months. And uh, <laughs> that's one of the... Stuff. So even, like, the Lib Dems have had to come up with proper policies, you know, cos when, <laughs> when you've got no chance of winning, you can basically say what you want, can't you? So for, for ages, they've been going, yeah, Jaffa Cakes will be one of your five a day and everyone can have a rope slide to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Who's your money on in the election, Faye? Uh, I'm, I'm very much enjoying the idea that um, the Labour Party are giving voters presents if they vote for them. I, they've said that they'll give poor people laptops. <laughs> which is very nice. Is he going to give them wheeze as well, maybe? Some um, chocolate? Um, give everyone well, a little bit of chocolate. I'll just give you a little bit of chocolate if you vote for he me. He might empty their bins. Um, <laughs> Gordon Brown got a laugh in Parliament this week. He got a laugh. This is the easiest gig you've ever seen, right? He basically said that um, Hewitt and... Hoon and Hewitt, right? Hoon and Hewitt. Uh, he was going to put them down a salt mine. Yeah, I know. That was the gag, right? <laughs> he says he's going to put them down a salt mine for what they've done in last week. And it got a laugh. I was like, they're laughing at that shit. <laughs> they should watch an episode of You've Been Framed. They'll have an heart attack. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether the election is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> We'll, we'll pick the moody girl. So you've chosen the picture of the angry-looking child. Yes. Here's a clip from the American version of Wife Swap to illustrate the question. At the Hollands, Joy jumps into action and forces the family to junk the junk. Definitely no cheese in the can. Oh. Very happy to be this throwing this away. It's bacon. No, I want my bacon. I gotta tell you something. Bacon is good for me. That's not how... She can do it in our family. She's not like she's the queen and we're the sorry people. <laughs> Joy, I have been nice to you, but now I'm coming to the edge. I promise you one thing, okay? If you do not have at least one food that you like, I will buy you a piece of junk. Is that a deal? No, I keep losing at deals, and I don't want to make a deal anymore. I can leave it. And you can't stop me from packing my bags. <laughs> She's going to start stopping, but she can't run those little high heels. <laughs> See, this face again. That's from the American version of Wife Swap. He looks very young to be married. <laughs> Here is your question. 21% of parents have used a parenting tip from a TV programme. True or false? Actually, specific parenting show. I reckon I have from Nanny. Well, there's a few. There was Nanny. Super Nanny. There was Super, Super Nanny. Nanny. Sit on the step. You know oh, the, the naughty step. The naughty step. Yeah. I've used that. So wh where's your naughty step? I've got a couple of stairs in the house. I would so imagine I, you've got, I've got loads, a choice. You? Of which yeah. One. <laughs> I've, got, I've got five kids, so I can send them off in different staircases. <laughs> My two are, you know, are only five months, so they don't. They're not really naughty, are they? That, that. I mean, are they they're twins. They're twins. So they're yeah. naughty, but do you really yeah. think that you could tell your five-month-old off at this stage? Don't you think it's a bit early to no, start telling them to sit on the naughty step? No, I mean, I, no, just put them on the naughty step. <laughs> just lie them down. rocker on the naughty step. <laughs> one, one of them does cry more than the other one, right? And uh, than our favourite one. And um, <laughs> there's one crying. The other one sometimes does look at me like she is doing my head right. <laughs> I'm siding with her a little bit, going, I know, it's mad, isn't it? <laughs> I, saw a, I saw a programme the other day and it said she shouldn't lie, you should never lie to your children. Which is an insane thing to say, because, you know, things like when they say, like, you know, are there, are there monsters under my bed? Well, you'd say, no, there aren't monsters under my bed. And they say, are there monsters outside? You go, well, they are, but they don't look like monsters. They're ordinary men and women who can do... <laughs> who can do terrible things. <laughs> Did you get to stay up late to watch the show this evening? Lovely Uncle Sean's got some stories, hasn't he? <laughs>
21% of parents have used a parenting tip from a TV programme, true or false? So what are you going to go with, Jason? I think I think it's probably right. Yeah. Yeah. True. Are you going to go right, true? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sean, what are you saying? Well, I like a bit of fun, a bit of a gambler. They call me the gambler. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, ladies, let's roll. What do we? <laughs> yeah, we'll go the opposite. What they said. Okay. For a bit of fun. Okay, I can tell you the answer is true. Oh. Uh, Jamelia, Charlie, what have the nation been talking about? It's got to be snow, hasn't it? It's wish. Yeah. It's absolutely got to be. And what's funny is it's become a national story now, it's at London. But we've had it for ages in the North West. We've had it since um, about 1984. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, you don't go on about it. <laughs> you're enjoying it right now. You're, you're at a stage where you're like, oh, look at it, it's all white, so we can build snowmen, and don't our gardens look like everyone else? Hell is coming, London. Hell is coming. <laughs> I was walking along the road just after it snowed, and everyone was moaning about lack of grit. I saw someone had taken it into their own hands, and what they'd done was they put um, loads of flour on the drive, and then when they run out of flour, they put loads of oats and then they put loads of sugar <laughs> and I, I was really expecting to see just next to that a baker frozen to death just <laughs> I've got my own thought I use these little sachets of salt <laughs> what, I do is, what I do is I sprinkle a bit like that uh, uh, <laughs> right there, right, then I get another one out <laughs> I get really pissed off. I get really pissed off by the whole like panic buying stuff that everyone talks about, like panic buying, because there's a food shortage, people go out and they panic buy bread, eggs and milk. Like to me that doesn't seem like panic buying in a food shortage. That's quite intelligent buying. Panic buying would be if you went out to the shops during a food shortage and came back with like a copy of 40 Towers and a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Yet to see snow. I've got no heating in my house, though. No heating in your no house. No heating in my house. You can't work the <laughs> buttons, can you? I basically. You just press everything. <laughs> you know. Lights coming on. How do you know that? Shutters in the garage. Come <laughs> <laughs> Have you been out and done a snowman? Have you done a snowman, Sean? I haven't done a snowman, no. <laughs> what are you suggesting? <laughs> you won't touch a snowman. Come on. What do a snowman for? <laughs> what sort of dirty <laughs> 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 Even if I wanted to, I don't think I could. <laughs> I did see the two guys that drove on the canal this week. Yeah. You see that? Great, wasn't it? You know, the best thing about the story, so it was guys, they got their car, whatever it was, a little tiny Citroen, they drove it along a canal and it went into the water and it reported that they both made it out alive and so did the dog. <laughs> they took a dog. <laughs> Maybe the dog was driving. <laughs> That's why they're on the canal. <laughs> you know, sometimes you go to your dog, go on, you have a go. He's <laughs> <laughs> gonna tape his paws to the wheel. <laughs> I'll do the gears, don't worry about the pedals. <laughs> That's what happened. You've got kids, Jamelia. Were they off uh, school? Um, my kids don't go to school. Your I, kids don't go to school? No, I, it's I for I the best. I homeschool them. <laughs> Sorry, good. Do you hate Just what? Sorry, not really. I homeschooled them. Well, good luck, Jamelia's kids. <laughs> so all the best with that. What do you mean? You homeschool them. What do you I wear? Can't. No, I know. <laughs> what do you wear? Yeah, that was my first thought. <laughs> what do you wear, Jamelia? <laughs> A saucy school teacher's yeah. outfit. Across on these panel shows, right? But I am actually intelligent. I wouldn't. I would not. <laughs> no. You know, I wouldn't do something like that. Oh, you know. Okay. Are they not sick of you though? Like after spending all day with you and then they get home. No, well, they're at home. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, we don't spend all day okay. doing schooling because like children don't need the whole time, and we don't stay in the house either. Like you know, sometimes we go to Tesco's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where are we going tomorrow on our field trip, Mom? Mummy's getting a bikini wax. Good luck, kids. <laughs> This is the news that the UK is still in the midst of the coldest winter for 30 years. A headmaster in Hampshire claims some pupils are struggling to make it into school because of the bad weather. He said of the 320 sitting maths A-level, 280 were in the exam hall when the exam started. Another 30 turned up 20 minutes later. Four people went to the toilet, but only three returned. Then 42 left the building. How many were there at the end of the exam? <laughs> many people in the north have been bulk buying food because they're fat, greedy... <laughs> what? <laughs> What's that? 
that about? Well, just because people are buying milk and bread, we like milky bread. What's that? <laughs> milky bread, you're both yeah. buying in Greg's. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Greg's is still open, they don't care if it's snowing. It's great, you can just slide straight in and put a pasty straight in your mouth. <laughs> Most common social faux pas. Is it saying goodbye to somebody and then walking in the same direction for a bit? <laughs> See you later, all right. <laughs> I know a real bad one from my point of view, because I'm lucky enough to fly in a jet. My little daughter, Isabella, she's three, she's never flown on a commercial plane before, and we went to Barbados, and I'm walking on the plane, we're getting <laughs> taken to our seats, and she turns around and says in the loudest possible voice, Daddy, what are all these people doing on our plane? <laughs> Did you just put some money in her mouth? Yeah. <laughs> That's My daughter's never been on a commercial plane. <laughs> Imagine people watching Channel 4 on a Friday night are thinking, oh, finally someone we can relate to. <laughs> <laughs> most annoying thing about new technology. Yes. Go on. Uh, the most annoying thing about new technology is that whatever you get, and no matter how great you think it is, in six months' time, there'll be one that's 15 times better than it out for half the price. So, like, you're there with your phone, check out my new phone. And then you meet someone about two weeks later and they go, oh, yeah, mine's got invisibility cloaking device on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have seen your phone, though, and your phone is spectacularly bad. Uh, I brought my phone into a sh shop recently, and the guy went, <laughs> the guy went, this is from 2004! <laughs> and he got the guy, he went, look, it's from 2004! <laughs> like, it's the oldest thing he had ever seen. It was like, 2004! <laughs> did, did he get all the other phones to come and meet his dad? Come and meet your dad! <laughs> OK, most annoying thing about technology. Uh, DVD players that don't play all regions of DVD. Oh. You don't play all regions of DVD, mm. you are racist. <laughs> what is the poshest sport? Quidditch. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not only posh, like, played by posh people, it's expensive as well. Those, like, flying sweeping brushes and that, those... <laughs> They're, they're like 45 quid second hand, you know what I mean? And, and who wants a second hand one? You know someone's died on it, so... <laughs> Posh sport. <laughs> Gotta be the equine sports dressage. Oh. Dressage. Who did dressage at school? Who did it? <laughs> I mean, we keep on saying we've got dressage. <laughs> <laughs> Who went to school and the teacher turned around and said, listen, kids, got PE on Wednesday. <laughs> Don't forget your pony. <laughs> <laughs> your pony, you got to do it in your vest and knickers, like that. <laughs> no, what happened? Is that the one where they just, they just walk around showing off that they've got an horse? They've got no, a horse that can dance. dance. Yep. They've got a horse that can dance. It's yeah. like, it's like, sort of quite... It's like, you know, it's it's like that, but with a horse. It's called... <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be... The weirdest... The greatest idea ever. Don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm invested in Levi Roots. Who must have heard of reggae, reggae sauce? Big time, yeah. I walk yeah. past it all the time. He's the most... <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, I must get... No, no, I'll go with something I trust and know. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a sauce. That sounds horrible. I've got a sauce. It's called Sean's Secret Sauce. <laughs> no, that's a very secret recipe. I make it at midnight. <laughs> when I'm drunk. <laughs> I switch the lights off in the kitchen, I just make it like that. <laughs> Some weeks it's delicious. <laughs> Some weeks it's poisonous. <laughs> so I'm going to make loads. I'm going to make millions. Because if you talk to Levi Roots, a fellow saucier... <laughs> <laughs> well, he sung for his sauce. Do you remember well, that? He did, yeah. Put some music in my food today. Give me some reggae, reggae yeah. sauce. Yeah. Nice. What's your song? My song. My song. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Sauce! <laughs> <laughs>